Hi there and welcome to My Week. I'm Christy McDonald. Thanks so much for joining me. Our contributors Nolan Finley of the Detroit News and Stephen Henderson of the Detroit Free Press are here with us. And we have to start with what happened in Las Vegas this week, the worst mass shooting in U.S. history. You know, on this show, we try to put news events in perspective, give you both sides of policies that could shape what is happening next. We've debated gun limitations, federal loopholes after Sandy Hook, after San Bernardino, after Orlando. And in these past few days, there has been debate over how we even talk about this shooting. Is it too soon to talk about limiting ammunition and gun purchases? Are we even foolish to talk about gun control when it hasn't even happened yet after those other shootings? Both Nolan and Stephen took very different angles when writing about the shooting this week. So let's start there. Hi, guys. It's good to see you this hey. week. And, and, and on a week of, I think, it's been very difficult, I think, for everyone across the country to, to process what has happened. Um, before I get to what both of you wrote, this week about about mm -hmm. the shooting. I want to first ask you, what was it about this event that happened? Did anything different stand out to you besides the, the obvious in terms of the number of casualties that we had and the number of people struck? Is there anything about the shooting that has struck you different than what we have talked about before? Nolan, I'm going to start with you. I think this is the longest we've gone without having a even a hint of what motivated this seemingly normal 64-year-old rich white retiree from Las Vegas. He fits no profile uh, and nothing has emerged yet uh, as of this taping that would suggest what drove him. Uh, the FBI interviewed his girlfriend yesterday. She offered no clues. There's no notes. There's no Facebook pages or anything that would suggest an affiliation. I know ISIS took credit for it right away. I think that was probably opportunistic. Uh, but why the why of it. I mean, there's never obviously a good reason, but there's generally by now we know so reason. And people want to, yeah, to kind of just see what would have pushed someone to this point. Mm -hmm. uh, Stephen, what, what changed or what was different to you? Well, I mean, again, the, the randomness of this, right? You're at a concert uh, with, with thousands and thousands of people. It is literally the last place I think you would think you would have to even be looking out for this kind of uh, thing and and this is going to sound a little morbid, but I'm actually surprised that we don't see more of this kind of thing. It's so easy to do, as he proved on Sunday, that you can get the guns, uh, you can get access to a spot up high, and you can do a lot of damage in a little bit of time. I, I think that's, that's what, what it if was. You decide to do I it. think that's what it was in height. terms of the the height and the distance, mm -hmm. the how far away he was mm -hmm. from the scene, um, and and the fact that there was no apparently suspicious activity that anyone saw him coming and going with the amount of weapons. How could that have been? That well, he had see, in that yeah. room. I think and, that's and part the of the, that's part of the, the 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 problem with the narrative here is. If, I guarantee you, if I walked into a hotel in Las Vegas with 10 bags of guns, lots of people would notice that. And there would be all kinds of response to it. And there should be. I'm not saying that's a bad thing. But the fact that this guy was able to do that without anybody's notice speaks to, uh, again, a kind of bias that we have in this society about and, who's who's likely to do and something. And I think that's bringing that's, the, that's, uh, that you interested in. He was so nondescript. I mean, he's an old guy. I mean... Even well, 64 were, is not that old. Well, I mean, thank when you, you say old thank guy. You. But he's not, he fits no, no, no sort of mold or profile. I, I think yeah, but even, the profile, if a, even if a, a, a 64 year old successful um, African American come in with a bunch of suitcases, no nobody'd be ringing bells. There was nothing about. Yeah, I disagree this. with that. But well, you know, I, I want to ask you both now about why you took the certain tacks that you did in writing about it this week. Nolan, the the headline on your column was stereotyping Vegas victims is offensive. What well, that, is it that you that drove you that that was what you were going to write well, about this shooting? No, that was the that was Wednesday. Um, yesterday, Wednesday, yeah. And today, I wrote about sort of the futility of the gun control debate, um, which is probably a little more relevant uh, to the discussion. But the 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 thing that that just drove me nuts were you know the immediate politicization of this, and you had a. a few commentators out there. We had one TV executive fired for it, but you had a few commentators who were trying to extrapolate and say, okay, they're country music fans, they must be Republicans, 
They support then politicians who don't support gun control. And, you know, that whole string that they were unraveling there made it sound like, well, okay, just desserts. And which is basically what the TV executive, was it CBS or ABC, who was fired for, for saying, I can't get any sympathy for people because they must have been Republicans. Well, first of all, you can't assume all country music bands mm -hmm. are Republicans. That's sort of stereotyping of victims immediately after the shooting. I thought speaks really to the unsavory place we are in, in terms of our political debate in, in America today. They were all Americans, just like the ones in the nightclub in, in Orlando. All Americans, all dead, and none of them deserve to die. I do want to get to the, is it, is it futile to have the, the gun control debate in mm -hmm. just a moment? But Stephen, yours was the Las Vegas shooting, politics, race, and, and terrorism. Yeah, I mean, I think there's an interesting conversation going on about how to describe something like this, right? Uh, this is a, this has all the markings of a terrorist act in the sense of uh, the mass nature of it and uh, the, the the sheer violence of it, but but then this is a guy who claims no real affiliation, uh, affiliation that we know of at right. this point. Uh, but I also think there is a political context to what he did that that gives it some political motive. Uh, the, the people who insist on this this uh, society of unbridled manufacture and distribution of weapons of mass destruction, which is what these are, these things that he was using, uh, they are, they have bought our, our government, they have uh, skewed the conversation so badly. I mean, 63% of Americans want tighter gun control, and yet we haven't seen significant gun legislation by Congress in, what, 30 years? Uh, there is a political motive behind this, and it is the defense of any reasonable uh, a restraint on the manufacture or distribution of these weapons. Should we bother to even have this debate about gun control when we haven't been able to push anything through after horrific events, well, after 20 children well, are shot and killed inside of a school? Um, are we at the point where nothing can be done and the argument will keep going back saying, well, anything that you do, any policy you put in place wouldn't have stopped this guy? I think you're seeing, you're seeing this time, you've got now Republicans and Democrats at least coming together and saying we can support uh, legislation on this, these bump stocks that allowed him to convert, convert a semi-automatic yes. to auto. That's sensible legislation. I would support that. Um, but I think first, you, you've got both sides have to move off off their hard positions and move and, and approach this in some reasonable way. I mean, we tried a ban on assault weapons between 1994 and 2004, and not much. Uh, it helped, it but didn't. it wasn't it Yeah, wasn't I looked at the stats yesterday. There's no measurable impact on, on, on gun violence or mass shootings. I mean, and then I think we also have to recognize over the last 25 years, gun violence, gun or killings by gun, have sh have have gone down 36 percent. So we have made progress in the area of gun violence. Uh, so we should look at what's working and try to try to double down on that. Um, you know, we always focus on assault weapons as you know as if that's some kind of magic magic uh, formula here. Rifles, which which are the category that assault these AK and AR weapons fall into, less than 3% of the gun deaths. You're six times more likely to be stabbed to death, three times more likely to be beaten to death. The, the, primary, yeah. the primary problem is handguns, and we never really get around to, after one of these incidents because so few occur with, with handguns. So I mean, you're talking about never, handguns also in, in, in terms of suicide rates as well, well and what they're, they're yeah, being used yeah. as there. But let me... But also look at... Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, look, at, look at the... I mean, no one's right that, that gun violence is going down generally. It's not going down in urban areas, right? So in Detroit, in Chicago, in Baltimore this year, uh, we have uh, murder rates and murder numbers that look like they did 20 years ago before significant reforms in criminal justice uh, were made, and they are all committed with guns, some with handguns, mm -hmm. some with uh, the semi-automatic uh, rifle. So, so it is not uh, an all-good story in terms of where, where we're headed. At the same time, we never, I, I think the thing we never talk about is why are you allowed to manufacture and distribute these weapons. Now, you can't do it with automatic weapons. I mean, those are not legal mm -hmm. to buy, uh, but somehow people get them, which, uh, again, I think should be uh, a traceable and liable uh, attached, liability should be attached to the manufacturers and the distributors for that. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, most 
handguns that criminals end up with were at one time bought legally. People, legal gun buyers, uh, have their guns stolen or whatever they do with them and they end up in illegal hands. I think we got to start talking about how that happens. How do we get to the place where people who shouldn't have guns have them and start tracing back liability to the people who are doing it? Well, I, you know, that's an area we, we have some agreement on in this issue. Yeah. I'm a strong mm -hmm. Second Amendment right. person, right. but I believe, like any other right, there's you believe some in reason, legal gun ownership. Reason, right. legal, yeah. and, responsible. and responsible. And one of the things that, um, an untold story here is um, in, in the city of Detroit, when legal gun owners arrive at many venues, including the football stadiums and baseball stadiums, and say, oh my God, my gun's in my pocket, I can't get through the checkpoint, they go back to the car and lock it in the car, and, and there are people watching, there are a great number of break-ins in cars around that, that, around those stadiums from people looking for guns. You, you, people know they're heading for a, to a ball game, they know they can't bring their gun in. You'd never leave a gun in a locked car. car. You never leave a, gu a, a, a gun like we had in that um, nursery shooting um, while I was gone. You never leave a gun out where children can get it. I own a lot of weapons, every single one of them. How many weapons is, is, do you own, do you mind if I ask Yeah, you? I do. Um, <laughs> All right. Every single one of them is in a gun safe. Okay, where, well that leads me actually no to my, that leads me to, to actually my next point though, because something that struck me about this story was the number of weapons that this man had. Mm -hmm. and the fact that he purchased 33 of them in the last year alone. And according to the ATF, there's no kind of federal regulation on how many, of course not. Not, not, not on how many weapons that you can have, but the frequency, I mean, that there is no flagging system that if you purchase 25 rifles or 25 any kind of gun in a month's time, there's no kind of flagging to the government saying, hey, does, you know, some guys in our system that just purchased 25 yeah, rifles. And that would be, you know, that would be perhaps a, a, a red flag you can look at. I mean, you've got to walk carefully with that to, to meet constitutional standards. But everybody is focused on the fact he had 25, 30 weapons, whatever it was, between that room and his house or more in his house. How many did he use? I mean, you can you well, can used kill. A couple of them. Wait, oh, I know. He went through magazines well, and yeah, didn't reload. Rounds. He just picked up another gun. He used a lot of magazines, but he didn't use all 25 of those guns. You have, if he had three guns in that room, he could have killed as many people. And we focus on the number. And that's part and, of the problem, though. Why can I buy a gun? But he was no more deadly because he had 25 guns than because well, but he, he had but he three. Could, but he could have used them if, if it could took have, them. But if he it, did. If it took, but it took to. them longer to find them. But Look, I'm going to make. I want to make a correlation that may be a little bit lame, but I thought about it this week. You know, when I go to the drugstore and I've got a cold and I want to buy Sudafed, they need to run my license mm -hmm. and they will stop me from buying a, a, a lot of Sudafed the because of I had store, a really right? bad cold once, and I remember them stopping me and within a week's time that I couldn't get more than a certain amount. How come we can't transfer something the like answer, that? The answer is the lobby. There is no other answer for that. It is that you have uh, a very powerful lobby that represents the interests of gun manufacturers and distributors. It does not actually represent, in my opinion, the interest of gun well, owners. It, it preys on the fears of gun owners who, who think that any, any, you know, any sort of encroachment on this constitutional right is, is a hair step away but, from gun confisca confiscation, uh, which it's not, uh, but they, they are acting on behalf of the industry that profits. The profits from this also, by the way, are tied to the violence. All of the gun stocks this week went up, and not just a little bit. They went up a lot. Why? Because gun they manufacturers like, folks like you go come <laughs> grab the guns. Well, exactly. I mean, this is <laughs> a cyclical. Time. This is a cyclical uh, uh, activity that protects gun manufacturers and distributors from logical restraint. But, so let me, so again, let me ask you this. So hang on. Mm -hmm. Let me let me ask you this. So we're at this point that things happen. Something big happens. We talk a lot about it. Is there going to be any action on it? And okay. I find it very interesting that you've got Gabby Giffords, who was the victim mm -hmm. of a, of a yeah. shooting, and you have Steve Scalise, who was the victim of a shooting as well. And they are in Congress now, mm -hmm. um, and they still come from they come from two different sides of this okay. equation. Because everybody says, and this is what I wrote today: Let's do something. Nobody can can put anything on the table today. Is there anything to that do? would have stopped? this shooting? So we're reacting to a specific incident. But does that, that mean that you? Stop what do you do? Everything. So, what do you do? so what if as long what as if, there's 300 million guns in circulation, those guns are going to be. What if some of those? What guns if some of the liability abused? for this was be, to be traced back 
to the people who either sold him the guns, the people who manufactured those guns, or the people who stole those guns, or whatever, however he got them. He got the guns He got legally, these guns and legally. And you, can, and you can no more, you can no more uh, assign liability to the people who manufactured and sold those guns than you can an automaker who but there's a reason for that. Ends up I agree. That's under the way. Control of a that's, drunk driver. that's the way the law looks right now. That is not what the Constitution says. It says nothing even you, close to that. You open and we that won't door, get and to, there's no product. Uh, your kitchen. That's knives, not true. That's there's not no true. no product that'll be safe. That's from, not true. So a kitchen knife. Sort of a kitchen knife has a productive, safe use. So does a gun. Uh, an automatic weapon does not. And you a can't buy an automatic weapon. A semi-automatic, but why but can you But you can make buy it? something that makes it an automatic weapon. Right. And why you can you buy something that makes it an automatic weapon? make a, an automatic weapon. If they want to ban bump stocks, I think you're going to find consensus Who's, on So that. how do automatic weapons get into the country? Automatic weapons are, are, you, are not available for sale to a normal people. So how do people today? have them? They will do what this guy did. They convert. Yeah, and I'm not. I'm not saying we shouldn't. My point is that the, the liability for this is all is all detached from the people who are responsible. Now, people if who are you're responsible making the and distributing the this stuff, then then you should you should be held responsible when somebody uses it. And, uh, and we never want to push this conversation beyond. In, in I'm more, fine to push hang it. Hang on, go ahead. Do that. Like, of what? Why in the world are we such a violent society? And it's why? Been a violent nation since the well, beginning. I think that I, you why know what, and are, I I agree with that. We, Nolan. Why do why are we allowing our kids? Sit but all they have day never been able. But they have never been able to decide in Washington to give the money to the research to back see what was happening with the gun violence. That has always been it's a non-starter as well. You need research to know that it's not a good idea to sit your kids in front of a uh, a man of war. Video game shooting people all day. Or, or, yeah, but or, this or, guy or is 64 years old. He wasn't it's sitting nothing, in front of a video game when he was a kid. No, but we do have, I mean, if you're going to do just deal just with this incident, deal with it because there's nothing you could have done yeah. that would have stopped this. If, if you couldn't get those guns. See, this is, the, this is the thing that's the fallacy that we fall back on all the time. Older societies don't see this kind of thing happen. And the Other reason, societies don't have a Second the, Amendment. Uh, but the Second Amendment doesn't prevent us from saying, the Second Amendment doesn't allow this kind of thing. And it, it never imagined what, this kind what of would, thing. Uh, what would the Second well, Amendment the words, should, the words, should permitted here? The words well-regulated and militia ah, actually well, have meaning. the Supreme Court's already decided Yeah, that well, state. a Supreme Court that's so under the influence of whom? You, the law, I would uh, hope, well, the Constitution. Uh, how about the NRA? I mean, I mean the, come on. There's no this other right. A, You're interpreting that as some kind of group right, no other right. In the Bill of Rights is not interpreting as a group. But except that, in, that except was that the words for an individual right. No, it wasn't. So the government couldn't come it and confiscate individual It was actually weapons. intended. It was actually intended to protect us against British troops who were sitting right across the Detroit River. And in, in case they decided to invade again, you needed to be able to to have people but defend assigned, the country. It assigned the right to individuals. It didn't say but communities it, can have a big mean, stock of weapons that will check in. You and know out what? Like a I'm library. not. A, I'm not somebody who thinks that the right doesn't exist. I'm mm -hmm. somebody who thinks that the words well-regulated and uh, in particular and militia have meaning. And they, they have, uh, the, the current interpretation is that they have no meaning and that is absurd. Yeah. There is no amendment in the Constitution that is interpreted that way other than that. And I think we're getting a good idea of why the, the gun debate and mm -hmm. uh, the nuance of And again, it I, I think, hard to, I think it's very there's hard. room for reasonable regulation. I think it's pointless to pass feel good I agree with that. No, I that agree doesn't with that. work. Yeah, I agree as long with as you have 300 million guns circulating in this country, that's a problem. Nothing's going to. So what do you do about that? Well, what could you do other than well, start confiscating mm -hmm. weapons? I, but confiscating but, illegal weapons, what's the what's the problem with that? There's no problem confiscating illegal, but not all of those 300. In fact, most of those 300 million are not illegal. And that's the problem. You have legal owners whose guns end up being used in illegal. You manner. have legal I owners said. like this fellow. Who uses his gun illegal? Yeah, How would no. you have stopped this with any I wouldn't, piece of regulation? I mean, Nolan, I wouldn't permit the, the the manufacture and sale of some of these weapons. I mean, we do that with all kinds of products, right? This of the, product of is the not assault, of the assault ban. We tried that; and it didn't work. Did, and that was you're, about you're sales. You're arguing about that a, was about sales. You're focusing on a cosmetic difference between this gun and the it's and the not thirty out six well, I have in my in my um, gun safe, which does the same exact thing. Say that to the people whose family, who are bearing family it's members the same, in Vegas. It's the same it's weapon. Not, it, we it's the same weapon, it I, just looks different. The idea, right, that, no more the idea that nothing could prevent this is on its face just 
just patently well, I, I think, I think I, Well, I think you, we need to get... You tell I think me if he didn't use an AK weapon, he couldn't have taken a 30 out 6 deer rifle in, and done the same thing? In the thing? larger I'm conversation, you, maybe not as effective. Able. I'm telling you, if somebody owned one, I'm saying could. in the, in the larger... Com in the, in the, in the, in the, okay, gentlemen, in the larger conversation, though, in the larger conversation, we need to get beyond... It, it, we wouldn't have affected what happened yesterday, and and maybe look a little yeah. bit look a little we, bit big picture. We All need right, to do with we're going to we're going to wrap it up. I agree with you on that. We're just going to hit a couple of other things real mm -hmm. quick before we have to go.